السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. الحمد لله. Before we begin talking about Ramadan, it is important to always to remind ourselves of why we gather in praising the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Because in reality, when we send praises on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, this is simply a means for us to learn. It's simply a means for us to remind ourselves of who our Prophet is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the one whose name itself means the most praised and the most praiseworthy. But how can you mention the name of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How can you say Sayyidina Muhammad if you don't have the meanings of that name in mind? You don't have the meanings of that name in mind. So when we mention the praises of the Prophet ﷺ, we are trying, number one, to remind ourselves of who our Prophet is ﷺ. Number two, we are trying to renew within us the faith that we have in the most praiseworthy one ﷺ. Number three, we're trying to stir within us our love and yearning for that messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is a central part of what it means to be a muslim to send blessings and peace on the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but also to praise the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this is an established sunnah from the time of our beloved messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam many people try to give you this false analogy. They say, you know, some people follow Qur'an and Sunnah. As for you guys, you sing songs. What's better, to recite the Qur'an or to sing songs? Firstly, it's not an either-or thing. And just like today in this blessed gathering, you, you, each of you recited Qur'an. We recited Qur'an together as well. We listened to Qur'an being recited. And we sent praise on the Prophet ﷺ. And this as well is from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ had designated poets who praised him. And we have hundreds of lines of poetry from the Sahaba. And they praised the Prophet ﷺ in the most eloquent of ways. Some people there will confuse and say, well, if you want to praise him, go ahead, but don't be excessive in your praise. And this is cheating. Because excessive praise is to mention something about someone that they, that they don't have. So you say about Sidi Aleem, that Sidi Aleem is a great photographer and he can fly. Saying he's, he can fly is excessive praise. It's not a quality that he has. But if you keep praising someone for things that they possess, for virtues that they have, that's not excessive praise. That is just speaking the truth. And there is no praiseworthy quality that creation can have, no virtue that humans or any created thing can have except that the Prophet وسلم, possesses it in the most perfect of its potential. There is nothing you can ascribe to creation except that the Prophet وسلم, possesses it in the most perfect way. So you cannot have excessive praise. This is why Imam al-Busini says, Leave what the Christians said about their Prophet. What did they say about their Prophet? That he is the Son of God. That he is God. Leave any ascription of divinity to the Prophet And after that, any quality of creation that you can ascribe to him, Make your praise good, because the one you're praising is the most praiseworthy. He is Muhammad. He's the one who deserves the most perfect of praise. Which is why one of the Turkish poets put it so beautifully. He said, O oh gardener, give up. O oh gardener, give up. Because you'll never grow a rose like Muhammad. And the ulama like asking this question, what is the most eloquent line of poetry said 
about the Prophet And they said many different things. And of course the Persians would say that Persian poetry has more beautiful expressions of love than Arabic. But we say Arabic is the language of the most perfect of creation. And one of the greatest lines of poetry said about the Prophet was said by one of the great poets of Islam, who's known as Sultan al Ashikin, Sidi Umar ibn Farid. And he said, Jumi'at mahasinuhu, falaw ahda salan min mahasinihi, li badni inda tamamihi, lam yuksafi. Wa ala tafannu mi wasifihi bi husnihi, yafna zaman. That Jumi'at Mahasin, all perfections were gathered in him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, such that if he gave a little light of his perfection to the moon when it's full, the moon would never wane. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, And despite the great ability, of those who would try to praise him, time itself perishes, and there remains in him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, much that was never praised. Because this is the one regarding whom Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Wa rafa'na lak dhikra." That we, Allah subhanahu wa taala, has elevated your mention. So when Allah has elevated His mention and His praise and His exaltation and His rank, then what praise can you give? That is sufficient in praising the one whom Allah has praised. So instead, we are trying to fulfill something that Allah has commanded us to do, to praise our Prophet ﷺ, express our respect for him, to express our love for him, to express our yearning for him, to be thankful for the gift that Allah has sent us. So when we gather to praise him, we are fulfilling a divine command, a prophetic sunnah, an established practice of the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ, regarding whom the Prophet ﷺ said, my Ummah will never unite on error. So when we come to these gatherings, our intention should be, we are following the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ by gathering for his praise. And this is something we should take to be the very health of our religion. The, the, the Sahaba, after the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they used to meet each other on the street and say, Ta'ala mu'min sa'ah, let's get together and believe for a few moments. And what did they used to do? They used to gather and mention things from the life of the Prophet They used to praise the Prophet mention his beauty, mention the great gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sending us the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we'll, so it's a, a great blessing to gather in gatherings like this. And we'll close by the words of Imam al-Busiri, Sahib al-Burda, the author of the great Burda Sharif, who said, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, بذكر المصطفى تحيا القلوب وتغتفر الخطايا والذنوب وأرجو أن أعيش به سعيدا وألقاه وليس علي يكوب نبي كامل الأوصاف تمت محاسنه فقيل له الحبيب But it is by the mention of the chosen one that sins are forgiven and errors and mistakes are overlooked I long to live through him in felicity and to meet him unburdened by any burden, a prophet perfected in his qualities. So he was named the beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So it's a, a tremendous matter that wherever you go in the Muslim world, communities have been established on the basis of the celebration of the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say the greatest blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, what is it? Many of the scholars they ask this question, what's the greatest blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an? And the scholars approach it from different angles. One angle is to look at it in terms of language. That what blessing has been most emphasized in terms of how Allah expresses it in the Qur'an. And many of the scholars said that the greatest blessing mentioned upon the believers is the sending of the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Ali Imran, verse 164, Indeed, Allah has truly showered His blessings upon the believers. 
for he sent to them a messenger from amongst themselves. Yet who recites to them Allah's verses and who purifies them. And he teaches them the book and the wisdom. But before this, they were in manifest misguidance. This is, according to many scholars, if you appreciate that, Allah has, indeed, Allah has truly blessed the believers. And Allah has showered his blessings upon the believers. And it's as if the blessings are so much that you can't even Put it, put it together in one place. They're overflowing blessings upon them. Okay. If you give a blessing to someone, right, they ex receive it. But when the blessings shower down, right, you can only take a little of it. But there's a lot more. It's beyond measure. If for he sent to them a messenger. So Allah says that this is the greatest blessing is the sending of the messenger. And then when, when you celebrate the moment, the mawlu, what are you doing? You are thanking Allah for the gift of Allah sending the messenger. It's simply a fulfilling of that divine command to thank Allah for that blessing. One of the great imams of the Hanbali school wrote, taught this one verse for 52 weeks in his Dars of Tafsir. And it's published in about seven to 800 pages. Because one of his students was taking notes. So 52 weeks, all year, he taught this. And it's published. From the Jalis, before he died, the Khabbana Allah al Mu'mineen. One of the great imams of the Hanbali school. And one of the great living scholars of our time, Sheikh Muhammad Awadah, edited the, the book and published it. That is the tremendousness of the gift of the Prophet. So, be confident about this beautiful way because this is what sustains Iman. Alhamdulillah. So inshallah we're going to look at briefly some of the sunnahs of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with respect to this blessed month. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nuri al-mubeen. Sayyidina wa nabina Muhammad bin Qadr al-Azim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam al-Azim al-Kathira. To mention some of the practices of the Prophet in this beautiful month, we'll begin with the beginning of the month. The beginning of the month. Because one of the sunnahs that is often overlooked is the dua you say when you see the crescent moon, when you see the new moon. So there's two aspects to this. The first is that if you're able to, it is from the sunnah of the Prophet to go out and see the moon. It's from the sunnah of the Prophet to go out to see the moon. But it's a tremendous blessing of Allah. The, moon, the sun and the moon are two of the great physical signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in them are many signs and reminders. And there's wisdom why we go to see it. So you should, you should strive to seek it out. It's a sunnah to preserve. And because it's also how we establish the beginning of the month. So one should go out to see it. The practice of the Sahaba was they used to go out to see the moon even when they were elderly. And there's a beautiful story from Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik. Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik was one of the Sahaba who lived the longest. Because he was born right around the time of Revelation, such that when the Prophet ﷺ reached Medina, Sayyidina Anas was 10 years old. And his mother gave him in service to the Prophet ﷺ, so that he would learn from the Prophet ﷺ by keeping his close company. He was 10. So he would take care of things that the Prophet ﷺ asked him to do. But he remained very close. And his mother asked, the mother of Sayyidina Anas asked the Prophet ﷺ to make dua for him for long life and great wealth and many children. And he lived past 105. He had so much wealth that he had to hire people to manage it and to distribute it. And he had so many children and grandchildren, he lost count. 